Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to worship this morning at Galloway Presbyterian Church. We continue to worship through this virtual means, and we give thanks to Alex for his continued support uh, and creativity with this service. Let us gather our thoughts and hearts in silence as we prepare for worship. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. We come to worship our God who has done wonders in our lives. God anoints us with joy and light, gifts from the treasures of God's heart. We come to follow Jesus who bears our lives with grace and hope. Jesus would send us into the brokenness of the world to bring healing. We come to be touched by the Spirit who brings gentleness and peace for all. The Spirit would enable us to offer reconciliation and justice to everyone we meet. The opening hymn is hymn number 342, Rock of Ages. Now hear the call to reconciliation. We hunt for those links which offer life, but they are all broken. We keep searching for hope only to be sent from one false sight to another. But God, freely and faithfully, offers us the access to grace we need through Jesus Christ. Let us join in offering our prayers to the one who is our hope, our life, as we pray together, saying, Of course we will do everything you ask, faithfulness of creation even as we cross our souls behind our backs. Yes, we could go where people are suffering, but we like the comfort of our homes. Yes, we could be with others as they seek to endure life, but compassion is often hard to share. Yes, we could offer hope to the hungry and homeless, but we barely have enough for ourselves. Forgive us steadfast love and have mercy on us. Remind us that it was when we were most foolish that you became fallible, it was when we were vile that you became so vulnerable, when the world would not welcome us that Jesus came to listen to our emptiness, to comfort our grieving hearts, and to cast out death's power over us. Amen. Now let us pray in silence. God has done it. God has carried away our foolishness. God has brought us out of despair and hopelessness and made us God's precious treasure. We give thanks to our God whose love is fresh and new in every moment, whose faithfulness is forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, Exodus the 19th chapter, verses 2 through 8. And this is a passage about the beginning of Israel's life as God's people. And it comes as a result of the speech of God who is calling a community into being. O strength of the weak, O hope of the lowly, O joy of our hearts, O love of your people, speak to us now through your words. They had journeyed from Rephidim 
entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to the God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, and you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Our psalm for today may be the best known of all the praise psalms. Part of that is due to its simplicity, but also in the profound affirmation that we are not our own. Listen to Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Our hymn is hymn number 602, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And because we are not our own, we are God's, the one who guides us, who teaches us, who loves us, who con continually offers us new life. This is the affirmation Paul makes in our reading this morning from the letter to the Romans, ending with the reminder that it was when we could not straighten out the mess we made, that is when God sent Jesus to us. We're reading verses 1 through 8 of the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Rome as well as to us. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul knew about helplessness, as did Moses and Miriam and the psalmist. In the gospel for today, Jesus sees the people like 
sheep without a shepherd, which is why he calls folk, why a new community is being created by the speaking of God through Jesus. We are beginning with the 35th verse of the ninth chapter and reading through the 8th verse of the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Let us pray. Now, O Lord, whether through my words or in spite of my words, speak to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we are at the middle of June, and the last few months seem like the last few years. They've been incredible. A pandemic, isolation, social distancing, constantly washing our hands, wearing gloves, wearing masks, all sorts of new ways of living. We've had marches, protests, cries for justice, People calling out for changes in systems that we've known for so many years. And in these few months, in these times of turmoil and uncertainty, we feel helpless. We wonder what is going on. What is it that we can do as people of faith? How are we called to live in such moments? How are believers, followers of Jesus to act, to be, to speak in the midst of everything that is going on around us. That's exactly what's happening in the gospel reading for today. The people back in Jesus' time were just like us. They're worried. They're helpless. They're uncertain. They're lost. They're living in times that seem so strange that they seem like a sheep without a shepherd, a classroom without a teacher, a team without a coach. And exactly at that moment, according to Matthew, that is when Jesus chooses to call his disciples. In the other, in the other Gospels, Jesus calls the disciples, and then in Mark, he goes home. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus calls the disciples, and then he heads down to offer what is called the Sermon on the Plain. But here in Matthew, here in this Gospel, when Jesus calls the disciples, He sends them out. At the very beginning, they're commissioned to go out and live and to serve and to care for others, just like Jesus. They're called to be in the thick of everything, to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Seems pretty logical to us, doesn't it? These are the 12. These are the apostles. These are the rock stars in the orbit of Jesus. Certainly Jesus could trust them. Of all the people who were around him, he could trust them to get things right, to do things right. Of course, we know the rest of the story. We know about these folk. The first apostle mentioned Peter. Well, he's going to go on to deny Jesus three times on the night of his arrest. The one who is named last, Judas, 
is going to be the one who will betray him to the powers that be. Two of them struggle with how do you deal with the oppression from the Romans. Matthew, on one hand, chooses to cooperate. He works for them as a tax collector. Simon the Canaanite, or the zealot, is the one who's out there and he's opposing the Roman oppression. He wants to overthrow them. And then, of course, there's James and John, the two brothers who seem to be more concerned about themselves and what sort of power and positions, what sort of wealth they might have because they're one of Jesus' favorites. Well, you get the idea. These are people that we have idolized as being the perfect choices. They're the pure, the righteous, the giants in our faith. But in reality, they're cowards. They have clay feet. They mumbled and stumbled and fumbled their way into the Disciples Hall of Fame. And yet, and yet this is exactly the ones that Jesus handpicks. Out of all the people following him, he handpicks these 12 to send out to do his ministry out there in the thick of everything. In the, into the uncertainty, the worries, the fears, the questions of people who are trying to live in their moments. Jesus sends them out into the thick of everything. That's exactly what God does. That's exactly what God has always done. That's exactly what God will always do. God calls people like Miriam and Moses, like Hannah and Jeremiah, Paul and Phoebe, to be the ones to go out there and speak of hope, of grace, of life, of justice. Not because they're perfect. Far from it but because God trusts that despite their mumbling and stumbling and fumbling, grace will happen. Justice will be established. Peace will experience a revival. That's why God calls us, calls you and me in these moments of uncertainty, of worry, of questions, of challenge, not because of how perfect we are, how smart, how wonderful, how gifted or holy, it's because God trusts that despite our fumbling and mumbling and stumbling around, God's purposes, God's hopes, God's love and grace will be accomplished. That's why we're called now in these moments of uncertainty and question and worry to be faithful in the thick of everything. Cure the sick? Well, most of us are not faith healers or even medically trained. But can't we work to see that everyone, especially the most vulnerable, can get the health care they need and should have to be able to find the testing they need, to find the treatments they need, to simply be able to buy the medicines that they need for themselves as well as for their family members? Raise the dead? Probably not, to be honest. But what about those who feel like all hope has died, that the future has turned to ashes, that their lives have been destroyed by a pandemic of worry? Can't we go out and offer them the new life, the new hope, the new grace that God wants to give them? Cleanse the lepers? Mm, again, probably not in our skill set. But surely we are able to go into our communities and care for all those who have been forgotten. Surely we can reach out to those who stand by the side of hopelessness and help them to find a job. Surely we can offer God's grace, hope, and peace to everyone we meet. Cast out demons? Maybe this is the moment that we have been given. To cast out that sickness called racism in our society and in our world. Maybe this is the opportunity we've been given in this moment to tell hate to come out of our hearts, our souls, our communities, and tell it to never come back ever again. Surely we have the faith, the power to bring new life, new hope, new grace to every neighborhood, every community, every state, every nation. This is what we have been called to do. In these moments of uncertainty and worry and doubt and pandemic and protests and all that's going on around us, we've been called to do and to be to live, dear friends, to go out and fumble and stumble or mumble and mumble our way in the thick of everything, 
trusting that God will use us, use our hearts, our souls, our lives to bring life and hope, peace and grace to all. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We are discovering as a part of what we are going through in these moments that the church is more than a building. It's more than four walls and windows. It's about the people who are out there caring and loving and sharing their faith with others. We continue to be the church, to offer ministry and mission to others. And so I invite you and encourage you to continue to share your gifts with all people and to continue to offer your tithes and gifts to our God. And let us have a prayer of dedication. We could be the healing for those who suffer. We could be the strength for those who long to endure. We could be the hope for all those buffeted by the world. And so we offer ourselves as well as our gifts in the hope that God will bless others who are in God's heart and to send us out to serve all of God's people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us pray. We would sing glad songs to you, commissioning God as we enter your heart with thanksgiving on our lips. For you are that love which never ends, that joy which overflows, that faith which is always full. We would proclaim our praise to you, voice of compassion, as you would send us into the world in which we live. For you are the word we can speak to power, the healing we can offer to the broken, the justice which can replace oppression. We would offer our hands and hearts to you, imaginative spirit, as you teach us new steps in this dance we call life. For you are the cleanser of our messy hearts, the breath of hope for shallow lungs, the password for access to grace. In these moments, we pray for all those who are in need, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, for those who want to work but cannot, for those who can go back to work but are scared, for those who continue to be on the front lines of caring for those with COVID-19. We pray for those who have lost their lives to this pandemic and for their families, for your grace and love to continue to surround them. We pray for those who are lonely, we pray for those who seek jobs, as well as those who are unable to work. We pray for justice in our neighborhoods and communities. We pray for your peace and grace and your hope to continue to be poured out upon us so that we might share those gifts with others. And in the silence, we would offer up those prayers that we can only speak to you. With our hearts, voices, bodies, souls, we offer joyful noise to you, God and community, holy and one. Even as we pray as we are taught by you, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn is hymn number 526, The Solid Rock.
remember wherever you go this week, you may be the only Jesus that someone will meet. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.